Hi, and welcome to another episode of Camera Talk. Today, we're joined by Daniel Chung of Daniel Chung Photography. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So, I hear that you're quite the CCD and CMOS expert. At least, you know a lot more than I do. Well, you can say that for sure. Well, great to have you. Uh, well, I wanted to start asking you a couple questions about what the difference is between CMOS and CCD. I hear it's all the rage these days, kind of like Team Jacob versus Team Edward. So what team are you? Are you Team CMOS or are you Team CCD? Well, for today technology, I am all CMOS. And for those of us who know very little about the difference of what CMOS and CCD are, could you actually uh, give us, before we delve into it, what is just a brief difference between a CMOS and a CCD? What are they? Well. Basically, CMOS, uh, CCD is in what you will find in a medium format uh, camera. Now, when you say medium format, what are you referring to? Like uh, Hasselblad, um, um, Pentax 6, 645, you know, uh, Lamia, uh, those kind of systems. Now, when you say those type of cameras, if you compare them to, let's say, Canon 5D Mark III, for instance, uh -huh. what would be the difference between that price range compared to a Hasselblad? Oh, there's a big difference between, between prices. First off, CCD is much more expensive to make than CMOS. So, therefore, you see Hasselblad with a price tag of a new, brand new car uh, in comparison to uh, the CMOS sensor, where you can easily pick pick one up for a couple hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. If if you're a photographer or someone who does video and uses digital equipment, um, what would be the advantages of a CMOS system over a CCD system? Well, in before uh, people use CCD just of their uh, uh, sensor capability and sensor sensitivity of it because um, it the surface of it is such uh, so much bigger than the CMOS and it can gather a much uh, much more light in that than a CMOS sensor can but uh, as technology evolved um, CMOS, sensor, CMOS sensor actually getting better and better and actually surpass what CCD can do, but um, with CCD, um, they can process 16 bit of uh, data in terms of CMOS. The highest they can go is 14 bit. CMOS processors are starting to surpass CCD processors. Right. So when you say that, what types of specs are you referring to? Where was the limitation with? CMOS versus CCD? The limitations for CMOS, um, I guess, is the, um, the chip size they can produce it is much, much smaller than the CCD can. Uh, but the uh, CCD limitation is um, if you surpass a certain ISO, for example, like um, I think 800 or 1600 for the CCD, it will equivalent to a CMOS nowadays that can go up to 200,000 ISO. So CMOS is able to get a much higher ISO right. than CCD. Right. CCD starts to break down. But uh, would it be fair to say that CCDs need less light, therefore they need less well, of an ISO? CCD has a much much more dynamic dynamic range to play with uh, in comparison to CMOS sensor. Uh, this is where the 16, 16 bit, uh, bit um, and the 14 bit comes into play. Now, when someone says that they have a uh, full frame camera, what are they referring to? Is that CMOS or is that CCD? That's the CMOS. Um, at first, uh, they, the CMOS sensor um, is designed and made for APHC camera, which is a crop sensor camera. Um, full frame at that point is not 
even in play yet. So as the technology develop um, and more advanced, uh, they start making it to uh, simulate a 35 millimeter film, um, like the surface of it. So it's, um, it's, it's much bigger and is much more expensive to produ produce. That's why you see Canon 5D Mark III compared to a Canon 7D, uh, the price difference is about $1,000. All right, so That's let's it. take an example of that real quick. Let's say that we had a 60 millimeter lens and say we put that on a crop sensor. What is it, four thirds? Like micro four thirds? Well, micro four thirds uh, also uses CMOS as well, but micro four thirds have a two times crop factor. So let's say we put a 60 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds CMOS, on a full frame CMOS, and then on a medium format. What could we expect? What would that 60 millimeter actually be for those three types of sensors? Well, let, let's say 16. Uh, if you put it on a crop sensor, which which is the uh, APHC sensor, uh, you have for Canon is 1.6 crop factor. So you multiply that by 1.6 of the 16 millimeter. Um, but if you put it on full frame, that's the true 16. Uh, if you if you put it on a CCD, then you got a reverse crop factor. Or, or you cut in half, actually. Oh, yeah, it cut in half. So it becomes like, you know, almost a 10, a 10 or a 12 millimeter um, wide angle lens. So cost is an, cost is an issue. If you had thirty thousand dollar budget, would you want to spend that on a nice uh, CMOS processor, or would you want to invest that in a CCD? Uh, and and again, uh, depends on what you're doing. Uh, if you need low light capability, uh, CMOS is the way to go. CMOS is better than CCD in low light. In low light. But because um, of the higher ISO. Because of a higher ISO. If you do, you know, weddings, events, uh, anything that associates with associate with uh, low lights, uh, you need that extra boost in ISO. CMOS is the way to go. But if you want true color depth and dynamic, dynamic range, um, CCD actually is the way to go. But now is that that field narrowing in terms of dynamic range? Is it is CMOS constantly getting closer and closer to what CCD can do? It is, um, and it, it's proven that even Pentex, uh, the six forty five Z, it's now a CMOS sensor, and a lot of uh, Hasselblad black uh, back, and uh, Mamiya back, Face One back, they all use the CMOS sensor nowadays uh, just because of the uh, ISIS, ISO um, and they incorporate the CCD dynamic range and the 16-bit um, information process into the CMOS nowadays so they can play with 16-bit plus higher ISO and more dynamic, dynamic range. So CMOS actually now has 16-bit capability. A absolutely. Now, just other smaller things to talk about. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Other advantages of a CMOS is that it takes up radically less power. Is that right? Like if you're shooting with a battery, a CMOS generally is going to take up a lot less power than a CCD will. Well, it depends because it's also um, what information they process as well. Uh, for instance, if you process a 12-bit uh, versus a 14, um, 12 obviously going to save you, you know, um, batteries power. Uh, but if, if you process process 16 versus 14, uh, it takes up a lot, a lot more. Do you think that CMOS is faster in terms of its development, in terms of what it can do, that it's actually developing faster? than what CCD does. Oh, absolutely. So in that sense, CCD is kind of plateaued or it, it just can't keep coming out with 
newer, faster, better stuff as, as, as quick as CCD. Absolutely, can. because most manufacturer has invested in CMOS um, for their future uh, products. Then, um, so CCD kind of take, taking a break, uh, so to speak. The other issue is that CMOS can push a lot more data than CCD. Is that correct? It just has a lot more processing power. Say, for instance, the, the I'm using Hasselblad as an example. The H3D, I believe, that's a 39 megapixel medium format camera with a CCD back. Um, now it can, it can process, uh, you take a shot, you might have to wait for five seconds before the image play back. And if you try to zoom in or move around and check focus or detail shots on the back itself, uh, it's going to slow, it's going to slow way down, uh, because it doesn't have the uh, equivalent of a processing power to support that. But with CMOS, um, usually instant. So let's just do a quick recap. So from what you've told me today, CMOS is significantly cheaper than CCD, right? Right. Uh, CMOS now on almost every level of measurement, ISO, even dynamic range to an extent, um, battery life, it, it can equal or outperform many CCD uh, processors. Mm, in most cases, yes. In most cases. Even though most CMOS um, processors have um, a crop factor, or at least a one-to-one -one factor, this can be a benefit in some cases because you're not having to deal with the curvature of the lenses. Absolutely. So it's just using the good lens rather than right. the entire lens. Right. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, basically from what you've told me today, what do you think if, if, um, if you had to be Team CMOS or Team CCD, which team would you be on? CMOS for sure. All right. Well, you heard it here on Camera Talk. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Daniel Chung of Daniel Chung Photography. And, uh, yeah, go Team CMOS. <laughs> Thank you, guys.